Continuing my quest for the perfect paint, you might wonder what I'm doing among the perfumes and toiletries of a chemist's shop. Well, this is what brings me here. Boots the chemist have about a quarter of a market that's growing at a fantastic rate, the home brew market. More and more people, mostly middle class, believe that with the kitchen sink and the airing cupboard, they can take on the big growers and do better. With 85p and one of these and some water and sugar, you can make yourself 40 pints of wallop. For the big brewers and the kit boys, brew it yourself is becoming a battle cry. Already 18 companies sell 5 million pounds worth of kits a year, but real devotees like Mr. Hunt do it the hard way. What started well, him was, off? Well, I was in the local one night and a chap said to me, are you making your beer now? So I said, well, what do you mean? We well, said, so you can make it now, it's legal. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, I went into uh, the local place and I found out where you could buy the... And I bought a kit, started off with a kit. Uh -huh. I made about five kits, because they all went wrong at first. And then I gradually now I buy the ingredients separately and make my own. What did your wife did... think of it? Well, at first she didn't like the smell. Uh -huh. So that is one of the reasons what drove me down the cellar. Because I started <laughs> off with a saucepan, you see, and, uh, and a small bin. But smells bin. will go up, sure. Oh, well, all I have to see, when, I, when I'm brewing, this is all on. Well, let's zoom the water in now. I put this on here. And of course, as soon as it boils, the fumes go out into the atmosphere and give the neighbours a bit the privilege of smelling it. Which do you get most fun out of, Mr. Hunt? Drinking your beer or making it? I think, personally, myself, that uh, making it, really. Yeah. Well, all this has naturally given me a pretty useful thirst. What about trying something at home, Bruno? Well, come along and have a seat. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Hunt's malty cellar houses not only brew it yourself, but a do it yourself, free, well equipped German beer keller. Lucky neighbours save up thirsts. Home brewers have their own annual exhibition and their own magazines. And cheapness, three or four pence a pint, isn't the only attraction. You can, if you know how, brew good beer. Full marks, and not a penny for the Chancellor. <laughs> If you're geographically lucky, you can find a pub that pulls beer brewed in a traditional way. Here, for instance, in the St. Albans pub used by John Green of Camera, which stands for the Campaign for Real Ale. I asked him, if someone offered you traditionally brewed bitter in the dark, how could you tell it from keg bitter? Well, drink it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but describe it to me. Is it the taste? Is it the after effects? This is a real pint of English draft beer. Is if there you... something different about English draft beer? Oh yes, English draft beer is unique. Real draft beer is unique. Keg beer is dead beer. It's had all the goodness taken out of it. This beer is full of flavour. It's got yeast, malt, hops still in it. The taste is in it. It's got everything. This is the traditional English pint. But if you get drunk on that, or keg beer, what's the difference? Oh, well, it's the power of the real draft beer that makes you drunk. With the keg beer, it's the gas that does the most damage. I'll tell you what's going to defeat you, and that's our membership with the common market, because all continental beer is keg, isn't it? It is, basically, Now, are yes. we going to be obliged to conform to their standards? What's the difference in the making of the beer? They use a different hop oh. in Europe. And this affects the taste. What's in the difference? They're uh, male and female hops. Golly, I thought I could do a story on beer without sex rearing its <laughs> ugly head again. <laughs> no, the female What hop... does the difference make? It makes a difference to the taste. What do we use then? We use female hops in this country. Oh. And continental, they use male. They're che cheaper to produce, apparently. But does it affect the taste at all? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Mind you, I think I'd rather drink female hops. <laughs> ah. Now from drinking to brewing. At South Wald in Suffolk, Adnams brew beer as it was brewed here 300 years ago. No knobs, but a mastered brewer. Wooden stairs, warm stone floors and lovely bubblings. In there is the wort, malt and boiling water ready for the hops. 
Later comes the fermenting yeast. No additives or preservatives and no sterilization. This beer will be drunk still yeastily alive. It all seems right. Lucky locals enjoy the final rightness. Horse delivery not as a gimmick, but because it's cheaper. Live beer arriving to the jingle of harness, tossing manes, and a clip-clop as regular and reassuring as a strong heartbeat. In my self-sacrificing search for the best, I've sampled a lot of beers, and I've found here, as I could in a few other places too, my perfect pint. It's a bitter. Maybe it wouldn't be the best for you, because no one beer could be every man's perfect pint, just as no one woman could be every man's perfect mistress. And the perfect pint needs more than beer, it needs the right setting and a warm sun and the proper frame of mind. The best beer can't taste right if you've got lumps in the liver. This then is my choice. Smooth, not too sweet, not too bitter, and it's a real McCoy. Not sterilized into deadness, but still alive, though more than willing to go down the hatch without a struggle. But you need something else, first of all, something every wise man should cultivate, the perfect thirst. Cheerio.